guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing my Pokemon region. So I know you guys were messaging me a lot, asking when the next episode was gonna be. Uh, I got a lot of comments on my other YouTube videos, but I just wanted to get those other Monster Mashes out of the way before we jumped in to our next Pokemon region Pokemon. So today, what we're doing is we're gonna be continuing our starter evolution series. So we had our first three, which we had the Cactus, Havelina, the water type Gila monster and the fire type quail. So with these, you guys left a lot of amazing comments on different name ideas that we could use for these. So let's do a name reveal. First off, we have Pricklet. I loved this because it was kind of like a piglet prickle combo. I was like, this is perfect for a first evolution. I think it's just the cutest name. And then we have Helamon, which I think is also an adorable name. I just really like it a lot because you combine Gila and Monster into Helamon. And then I think we'll kind of incorporate some water sounding names with the next evolutions. And then finally we have Quailet, which I think was super cute. I really like this name as well. So meet Priglet, Helamon, and Quailet. So today we're gonna be making the second evolution for these three Pokemon. And since you guys suggested so many amazing names from the last video, I actually was able to pick out names for the first, second, and third evolution. So let's go ahead and do a name reveal before we start getting into these sketches. So for this first one, we have Priglet, which evolves into Prickery. I thought that was really cute. Like again, with the like prickers of the cactus. And then Helamon is going to evolve into Hydrillo. I really like this name because it's kind of stepping in the direction of showing that it's a water type. I just really was attracted to how this name sounded. And then Quailet is going to evolve into Budburn. I think this is super cute. The logic for this one was the like little rosebud on the head combined with bird and burn. Really like this one. So today we're going to be sketching Prickery, Hydrillo, and Budburn. And I think I'm gonna start with the water type today since last time we started with the grass type. So let's jump in and get those sketches started. Okay, so generally what I'm thinking for our water type is a lot of the times I've seen the water types, they start as like quadrupeds and then slowly become bipedal. I, I know that happens amongst other types too, but it's one of the things I've observed in a couple of the water types. So I think we're gonna go with that because the final evolution name I have in mind needs to be bipedal. We have to make it happen with bipedal. So let's get it on its way to being like a full bipedal creature. Okay, so overall shape, we're gonna be trying to aim for something that's upright. I kind of want this to stay kind of like a bulkier creature. My initial thoughts are kind of like how with Totodile, there's that evolutionary chain into Feraligator. I'm kind of taking inspiration from that and kind of basing this evolution chain off of something similar. And then in terms of like a type variant for this one, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and go with Water Poison just because of the venom poisonous nature of a Gila monster. So I think we're gonna run with that for its type variant. So I kind of want to figure that out as we go as well. So with that poison type, I think I'm gonna really lean in on the fangs of this one for the most part to be the primary design aspect of this. And then the rest of the body, I'm gonna have to figure out how to build that up because I don't know, this is getting into, I guess a little bit harder territory for me because I'm trying to figure out what design aspects we should add to get to the final evolution look. So I think this next evolution, I'm gonna push showing maybe the tongue a little bit more and a few fangs for the most part. I think that's what we're gonna really lean into for this one. And so then the next evolution, we could maybe even have like more cool fangs going on with this one. I also wanna keep playing off of some of the original design aspects, but kind of figure out how to make them a little different. So I think for this headpiece, like the, the leaves, we're gonna make them a little bit longer and flowier. I think that's gonna look really cool to add a little bit more crowning to him with like this leaf color. And then maybe we'll carry it down into the snout like that instead. So then we get a different color variation going into the face as well. And I wanna keep those spots from earlier too. So we'll just do them a little bit bigger and then maybe I'll add some more spots throughout the body. One other thing I forgot about was these bands that we put around its arms and such. I'm wondering if 
if we should keep those and make them almost look like floaties or something. Maybe we could do something like that. Like make them these bigger padded shoulder pad things. And then maybe we'll put the rings around the elbow for this one instead. Maybe something like that. And I wanna keep the spots and like color splotches at least a similar vein for this one. Maybe we'll change like the tone of the color into something else a little bit, but maybe something along the lines of this. I'm really liking this overall. I think it's cool to add this extra frill going on here. And I think it's gonna work really well with a final evolution, like slowly making this get larger and giving it more of a fin-like structure, I think will be really cool too. But I'm really liking where this is going. We just made him, we made this a little bit bigger, add some more fangs, got a little bit of a tongue going on. We'll change the color palette a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think this is looking really dope. So I think from here, let's go ahead and jump in. We'll do the line art and the color and we'll get this one done. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, let's jump into our first of the three Pokemon designs with our water poison type is what I think I'm going to decide on. I know you guys left a lot of comments on the type variations. And honestly, there was a lot of really cool ideas. You guys have some really awesome ideas for these different Pokemon types and like different attacks or moves they could use. So I'd love you guys to keep sharing it down in the comments, like for this one and for the other two. If you have ideas of like special attacks or maybe special abilities that these things would have per evolution, I would really love to hear them. So please leave them down in the comments below. So with this one, uh, basically with these three, I noticed that I did a little bit of a style differentiation compared to my first ones. I kind of went back into how I usually do my designs with kind of a thicker line art compared to my original ones. I'll keep this in mind for when I do the third evolution, but it had been so long since I've even drawn uh, these Pokemon that I completely forgot what style I did for drawing them. But I still really liked how this one turned out. I loved experimenting with some of the different colors. I, I had the idea of the Totodile evolution in my brain, so I wanted to experiment with changing the different blues on the palette and like trying out some different color combinations for this one. All right, with the water drawing done, let's jump into our fire starter next. So for Budburn, this one I also want to make bipedal. I think I'm gonna keep the grass type as a quadruped and have two bipedals and one quadruped because at least where I was thinking of going with this, I remember talking about like this cool, like elegant looking bird with some cool like smoke going on for its little doobly doo. So I think we're gonna start figuring that out and moving this towards a bipedal creature. I'm thinking kind of similar to Blaze Blaziken, not fully like Blaziken, but like another type of bipedal bird type. Okay, so this one is Budburn. And so this one I think we're going to utilize showing off more of the flower for this one, because either way, slowly I wanted this flower on its forehead to grow bigger and eventually have the little quail, uh, doobly-doo <laughs> coming out of it. So maybe this one, the flower is opening up. Maybe we could do something like that. And then maybe a little bit of like flames around it. Yeah, maybe something like that. This is looking more like a finch beak, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> this one's harder for some reason in my brain. It's like kind of melting my brain to figure out how to make this a bipedal bird. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, for sure still want the flame collar. And then it has this crest going on the back of its head, but I'm wondering if we could evolve that to something else or just make it more like longer hair and then make it really long in the final evolution to match that elegant feeling that we were going for. Thinking for the end of these arms, we could make them look like cactus flower getting ready to bud. So maybe we do some plating like that and then little birdie claws in there. Maybe something like that. I'm kind of liking that. I'm trying to channel fancy bird energy. <laughs> So maybe this one could be kind of similar to like a ballerina or something similar. I'm trying to think what would be kind of a cool fancy bird motif for this. Or maybe instead, instead of this, we start going towards like a, a dress like skirt feathering. Cause I know Final Evolution, I think it'd be really cool to just have like a really long cascading like skirt-ish of feathers. I think that will look really cool. So maybe we can start heading in that direction with some like a feathery skirt type of situation. Kind of feeling pretty good about this phase of it. I do like where it's going bipedal wise. And I think this is setting it up for my idea in my brain about how 
the skirt would work for the final evolution. Can add a little, a couple more feather layers I think will be nice. And then I think I'll incorporate these kind of like more squiggly pattern, maybe down here along the skirt, like maybe something like this would be kind of cool at the bottom or along the middle to replicate that. That might be nice. So I think from here, I'm gonna start doing the line art and color and we'll figure out like where we're going with this in general. I think I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more. I am liking where this is going. I think it's looking really cool and it's getting into that bipedal territory. I think I might have a few too many details for a second evolution. So I think I'm gonna play around with a few of them as I do the line art and then we're gonna jump in and do color and then we'll be done with the second evolution. I'll see you guys in a bit. And now to kick off the fire type for our three evolutions. And this one I really struggled with. I think you guys might have seen a little bit of that struggle when I was working on the initial concept sketching. And then when I started the line art uh, and color phase, you can see I even changed the skirt in the end. I felt it had a, like a little bit too much detail, like it was getting kind of messy in terms of the layering of the feathers and the detailing. So I was like, let's step it back and simplify it a little bit more. And I do like the overall shape of this one a lot more now that I don't have a bunch of those layered feathered skirts. It just was getting way too messy for me. And so I started by basically coloring in some of the existing colors that were from my first evolution and then experimenting with some new colors. Since the quail, like primarily, at least for the male quails, I can't remember if female quails look exactly the same. Um, I think they're more in the brown palette, but they have these really beautiful black and gray feathers. And I was like, I really want to start moving towards that for our final evolution. So I thought adding it in um, here in general in a couple of different areas, like on the legs and like the back head feathers, I thought we could slowly start adding in those black palettes for the final evolution. All right, so we're on our final Pokemon for today, which is the grass type. So we need to figure out where we're going with this second evolution for Prickery. Yes, Prickery. <laughs> so for this Pokemon, I do want it to slowly get more and more covered in spines is kind of what I'm thinking, at least in terms of where we're gonna go with this one. Or, ooh, better idea. What if we made it kind of like a Spinosaurus pig combo. So I had the idea, I think earlier on, I should have rewatched my video before doing this. That would have been smart, Caitlin. So I had the idea earlier on of using prickly pear leaves and basically having a couple of leaves with spines on them like this. So I think we could do that similar idea and slowly give this guy more and more prickly pear aspects to him as well. It has been a while since I've looked at these Pokemon, so I apologize if I've said this in a past video, but you know, sometimes you just forget what you've said in previous videos. <laughs> I think I'm gonna slowly make this flower a little bit bigger too. I think it'll be really cute. Just slowly increasing this guy on his little cactus bulb head. Gonna increase those fangs too, his little tusks. Make them a little bit bigger. Ooh, I'm really liking this face. Really liking the face. And we want to keep him pretty rounded. And I'm trying to decide what we should do in terms of adding the uh, prickly pear platelets because part of me wants to add them now, but they would also look really good with a final evolution. So maybe we add a couple of them or maybe just a few to hint at it. And then we just add a bunch more later on. All right, now at the general pose, kind of figured out now it's a big decision. What do I do about the spinage? Because we could make it similar to how Hickories or Havelina are and just have lots of long spines. And then final evolution, we could do the platelets kind of like almost Stegosaurus-like. So yeah, maybe this first one, we lean into one of the, I think when I first did the sketch for the first evolution, we had like three bands or four bands of spines. And so maybe this one, we lean into the spines a little bit more. Okay, maybe not that much. It's a little too much. <laughs> Roll it back, Caitlin. This is a really tough decision because with the name of Prickery, it makes sense that he has a lot of big, long and pricky spines that I'm really still gravitating towards trying to figure out how to make it with those aspects of the prickly pear. And I don't know if there's some way I can bridge the gap a little bit now or kind of keep it like this. Tough decision. You know what, we're gonna stick with the spines because I think it fits the name prickery. And then in the next evolution, we can start exploring that prickly pear aspect because I do like this and I just don't wanna overdo it. So then the third evolution just has a lot of really cool and extra details in it. So I think we're gonna go ahead and run forward with this. I might change a couple things 
while I'm doing some of the drawings, or not drawings, but doing the line work and the color. But I think this is a good start to where we're going with this one. So let's jump in and get that started. All right, time to finish our final Pokemon of our trio. And I think this one is probably one of my favorites. Uh, at least in terms of the final design and the look. It's really hard because I think I'm just really attached to this particular Pokemon in the starters. I know that's kind of what happens with Pokemon games. You find your favorite starter and you just really cling to that. Like for me, it was like Charmander. I loved uh, Cyndaquil. I did really like Totodile as well, but like each evolution or not each evolution, but each game, I have a favorite starter Pokemon. And I have a feeling this one is my favorite for my quote unquote, my region game. But for this one, I added in a couple more details that I didn't really show in the sketch. I wanted to put some prickly pear fruits to slowly start alluding to the extra evolution later on to have the prickly pear uh, stegosaurus spines. I thought that would be perfect for this second evolution. All right, guys, and we are all done with the Pokemon starters. I have to say, I really like them. So let me run through them real quick with you. So we got our second evolution for our water starter, which we named Hydrillo. And then we have the second evolution for our fire starter, Budburn. And then finally, the second evolution for our grass starter, which is Prickery. So I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. Uh, I was like a little hesitant for a couple aspects for like a few of them, but overall, I really like how this turned out. As you can see with the new shirt, it's been a couple of days. I recorded drawing most of them and then kind of worked on them over a couple of days and then stepped away and came back and I still really dig them. I think this is a great middle point for our Pokemon evolutions and I can't wait to get to the final evolution. I have so many ideas going around in my brain, but if you guys have other ideas for what type of Pokemon I should make for my region, I know we got the evolutions that we're thinking about. We have the legendaries or even making like region specific creatures of like existing Pokemon. Let me know down in the comments below if you have a cool idea that we could add to our Pokemon series. But either way, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, I'd super appreciate if you hit that subscribe button, join our little community and check out my Patreon. You guys supporting me on Patreon directly influences this channel. It helps me hire an editor and upgrade my equipment. So I'd really appreciate any support you can give over on Patreon. But anyway, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and I'll see you all next time. Bye everybody.